the track stint that we're in at the moment. Next weekend, we'll be going to the street track at Detroit, and there we may well see some different cars up there and performing well. Having said that, don't forget Tracy was right on the pace in Surface Paradise, wasn't he? Yeah, that is a, one of the great things about this series, though, is the variety of racetracks on which we run. Only two more oval tracks, I think, to come this season are Michigan Speedway and the new Fontana, California Speedway and Fontana, California. Two super speedways, of course, completely different configuration to here. But, uh, you know, we've got, a, we've, got a, we've got some wonderful action coming up this afternoon. Greg Moore is still in the lead there. He's done a beautiful job this season. He was fantastic last season as well. He's due a victory no question about it and uh, assuming he has enough fuel to make it to the finish he is going to be a very very hard guy to beat and we see Mark Blundell coming in for a quick splash of fuel he was running in fourth place hadn't stopped earlier on they've done, redone their sums I reckon they're going to be going green in, in, a, in two or three laps now he says that's a bit too dodgy for me we need to come in and make a pit stop Alan McDonald this weekend taking over the engineering duties for Mark Blundell uh, taking over from Jim Hamilton who's moving more into a development role with the team and uh, Mark's done a super job this weekend hasn't he? He'll fall to the back of the pack now he knows he's got enough fuel to go to the finish at least and that puts more of a question mark I would say over Moore, Vassa, Boisel and Bobby Rahal. <laughs> he's used to gambling on fuel they won't want to run out again will they? No that's right they've had enough of that already he came so close to his first win in five years in Rio and uh, I should think he'll be very cautious not to do the same thing again but you don't forget they can change the amount of fuel they're actually using once it does go green they don't necessarily have to run the engine flat out they can run in a slightly more economical mode if they choose to do that but of course you're then at the mercy of those guys who can run flat out because they've got plenty of fuel on and they're going to be going that much quicker on track so you could see quite a few changes as this race gets underway once more and Greg Greg Moore up front not having stops and looking to try and run as economically as possible. Running the car, perhaps, uh, you know, just trying to ease it into corners just slightly different. You've got to drive in a different way when you're running it uh, econo to, for economy as well. And it's going to be tough to hold on to the lead position. Jimmy Vassar there, right behind him. This tremendous run of finishes that Jimmy Vassar has. Something like 23 consecutive finishes now. We've talked about in the last few races and he still keeps going. Yeah. Wonderful to see. Yeah, and he, he's driving so well this season. He seems to have had all sorts of niggly little problems. Uh, but the defending champion really is uh, living up to his, his form from last year, this year. I think the results might not reflect it completely, but he is still sixth in points and, and you know, not that far out of second and third. And he really has done a nice job. He really deserves, I would say, a little bit of luck on his side. And, uh, you know, last weekend, actually, before the race in uh, St. Louis, he was off down at Charlotte doing an IROC race, and he led that for most of the way as well, uh, and had a very, very good run on the high banks in, the, in a Pontiac stock car. So Jimmy Vass's duo victory, I'd say, this season. Right, we're ready to go racing again. The pace car lights are out, and as they come along the back straight, Greg Moore leads them around, and it begins to put the accelerator down. Jimmy Vassar is looking very keen as it goes green. He's not allowed to overtake, of course, before they cross the line, but he's trying to build up the momentum here, Jimmy Vassar. Green flag. Vassar goes for the inside into turn one and tries to squeeze past Greg Moore, but Moore's not having it. And as they come out of turn two and onto the back straight, Greg Moore has the advantage over Jimmy Vassar with Raul Bozell in third place, Bobby Rahal in fourth, and Maurizio Guterman next up. No, in fact, it's not. It is Michael Andretti in fifth place, then Guterman, and Guterman are coming under attack from Tracy already. Watch Paul Tracy in the background alongside Guterman. Paul Tracy trying to make up for the time lost in the pit stop, and he squeezes past Guterman. Guterman didn't want to let him through, but he had to in the end, and that now puts Tracy into sixth position. And remember, he's got plenty of fuel on board, and he's got a fresh set of tyres. So Tracy is looking very, very promising now to take his fourth win in a row. He's got to get past Michael Andretti now. That's not going to be so easy. Andretti looking to defend his position. Oh, Tracy forced wide onto the grey, and that might even give Guterman the chance to come back at him. Tracy ever so wide through turns one and two, and indeed Guterman trying to take advantage of it, but he can't quite do it. But there, Jeremy, just shows you, once you get offline, you can really get into trouble. Oh, can't you? Just one little slip. You get out on the marbles there. These soft tyres, of course, with the, the Garstone tyre war, softer rubbing than we've had in the last few years, well, for the last couple of years, I should say, than in the past. That tends to throw off the marbles that come off the edge of those tyres, and they just accumulate right off the racing line. You get a little bit wide, as we saw with Hiro Matsushita a little earlier on, you get a serious trouble. And uh, Paul Tracy lucky to get away with that one. Yeah, he survived.
him, didn't he? But uh, it could have gone wrong for him, so he has to be a bit cautious. You can't afford to play games with Michael Andretti, and uh, Tracy just judged that a little bit wrong, and it lost him a fair bit of time. And he can't afford to lose too much time, because if it stays green flag racing all the way through to the checker, then Greg Moore will have opened up quite an advantage by the time Tracy's worked his way through these other cars. So he cannot afford to lose that sort of time behind the likes of Michael Andretti. And Andretti himself here, now looking for a way past Bobby Rahal. These two with the same Ford Cotsworth power in the two chassis. But of course, remember, Rahal driving the Reynard chassis built in England and Michael Andretti driving the Swift chassis built in California. And the race is on between the two of them. Andretti, who started off the season in such superb style, has had a bit of bad luck in the last couple of races, but always one to watch, always in at the fight for the finish, if the car's anywhere near good. And he now looking to find a way past Bobby Rahal. Greg Moore, though, still a race leader. There's the gap back to second position, Jimmy Vassar. Third place for Raul Bazell. And then the battle for fourth position between Rahal and Michael Andretti. 2.3 seconds of that, the gap, that lap, lap 152 completed by Greg Moore. He's coming around us now in front of us in turn four, and a couple of slower cars ahead of him, a clear lead over Jimmy Vassar. Raul Boisel there also on his own in third place. Then is Ray Hall and Andretti, and Tracy right behind him. Right behind Tracy is Guzman. We've got less than 50 laps to go. We've got a lot of rating to come. between Rahal and Andretti, and then Paul Tracy. Now, we saw Paul Tracy make that attempt on Michael a couple of laps ago. Ever since then, he doesn't seem to have been able to close up behind Michael Andretti again. It's almost again like we saw earlier on in the race. On the opening few laps after the green, he's in dynamite form. But once the tyres come up to temperature, he just seems to come back to the same sort of speed as everybody else. I think it's more a question of the traffic, Ben. I think, I think Paul Tracy's car in clean air is working extremely well. Jimmy Vassar second, Bozell third, 
Michael Andretti in fourth, then Ray Hall and Tracy, with Mark Blundell still in the points there in 12th place. And Michael Andretti is again the man on the charge. He's moved past Bobby Rahal. He's moved past Raul Bozell as well to move into third position now. Andretti on a charge, but don't forget it's Greg Moore who leads and Jimmy Vassar in second. Michael Andretti is absolutely flying. He's carving chunks off uh, the two men in front of him. He, of course, has already stopped. He stopped under that last caution. There's that battle between Paul Tracy and Mauricio Gujumi. That's for sixth place. But I'll tell you what, my eyes are on the third place guy. That's Michael Andretti. 3.4 seconds between himself and the race leader, Greg Moore. Jimmy Vassar in between them, but uh, the gap only half a dozen laps or so ago was over six seconds. So Michael Andretti is flying. Andretti, once again, as we've seen this year, having the car set up so well for race conditions, and it is working perfectly now as we get into the final 26 laps of this race. Final 25 laps as they flash across the line once again. Dario Franchitti in picture at the moment with Bobby Rahal, but Dario's down in 14th position. He's two laps down from the leaders now. Mark Blundell in 12th place is one lap down, and uh, this battle between Tracy and Gujumin, well, Tracy with the advantage over Gujumin, sixth place for Tracy, but at the moment it's not looking so promising for that record-breaking fourth win in a row, or record-matching fourth win in a row, and the hundredth win for Penske, as Tracy now tries to squeeze past Dario Franchitti and makes it safely through turns one and two. But up front, let me tell you that Michael Andretti is right up behind Jimmy Vassar now. You can't see it on picture, but we can see it out of the commentary box window as uh, that battle further back. There it is, Michael Andretti right behind Jimmy Vassar in the target car now. This is the battle for second, and not much further up the road is Greg Moore in the player's car. Moore comes past us in turn four, and then we look back to see Jimmy Vassar and Michael Andretti. It is a bit of a gap. Andretti's got to get on with this move. He can't afford to sit behind Vassar for too long because Greg Moore is a long way up the road, and Moore still looking to become the youngest ever winner of a PPG Kart Series race. And as he told us yesterday, Jeremy, he's only got a couple of weeks in which to do it, either this race or the Detroit Grand Prix. Greg Moore is looking for it, but Michael Andretti, there he is from the view from onboard Jimmy Vassar, the menacing Black Swift of Andretti, and he's going for the inside into turn one. Doesn't quite manage it there, but has he got enough momentum onto the back straight? Yeah, he's got to get a run on Jimmy Vassar too. And of course, the, the problem for Michael Andretti is there's not much traffic around at the moment to hold up Jimmy Vassar. So he's got to make that move on his own. He's got to make, make the momentum through the corner, come off the corner faster and get alongside Jimmy Vassar. Vassar's got a Honda engine, of course, Michael Andretti, the Ford Cosworth. Not much to choose between them. Michael Andretti's car seems to be handling a little bit better, perhaps, at the moment, but not much to choose. And meanwhile, Greg Moore running very, very consistently, out in clean air. He's just lapped Mark Blundell, who is running well in 12th place. And then uh, Hiro Matsushita is ahead of this two as we see him flash across the line. 20 laps to go. And you can hear the radio from uh, his uh, Newman Haas pit crew telling him 20 laps to go and uh, giving him an idea of how far ahead Greg Moore is. Three seconds the gap between uh, these two and Greg Moore. Andretti's got to get on with it. He has not got much time left. It only takes them about seven minutes to do these uh, 20 laps. And look at this, Andretti goes for it. Andretti's on the inside going into turn one. And surely now he's got it. He's up into second place. Andretti is now going chasing after Greg Moore. He's got some clear space ahead of him. And Greg Moore will now hear on the radio the news he did not want to listen to, that Andretti is in second place and chasing after him. <laughs> and we've got a race on our hands now. We've got 18 laps to go, and there's about three seconds between them. A little bit less, I think, that time around. Last lap for the race leader, Greg Moore, 23 seconds. Michael Andretti certainly able to go a little bit faster, but not much time to do it. He goes inside. Here Masajida clean pass there into turn three. He comes around in front of us. Beautiful line off the corner. He's using every inch of the racetrack. And Greg Moore has some traffic ahead of him. Yes, Mark Blundell lies between Greg Moore and Michael Andretti, but as you say, Moore now has to navigate his way safely past some of the slower cars, and this is perhaps Michael Andretti's opportunity. Coming up behind PJ Jones, Dario Franchitti's in that little group as well, and Michael Andretti really going quickly. That last lap is going to be a quick one from Michael Andretti. His last was a 22.721 across the line. They go at 22.6 this time from Andretti. That's one of the fastest laps we've seen up in that lead group, and Greg Moore now has to get through this traffic as quickly as possible. Moore going past Dario Franchitti in the background. Andretti